Welcome back to Bulletproof Outdoors. I am Brandon. Today we have an incredibly special guest, one of the all-time greats in the fishing industry and one of the truly most recognizable faces in the fishing industry. Before I introduce this guest, let me just remind you that if you're new here, you might want to consider subscribing. And if you do, make sure you hit that little bell so you don't miss anything. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming the legendary Gord Pizer. Gord, thanks so much for joining us. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Brandon. Good. Literally, I, I was telling you just as we started here, just got in from being out in the bush, uh, actually went across a small lake. The ice went off uh, probably this morning. Oh, yeah. So I know for a fact that the lake I was on, I was the last person off that was on it last fall, oh. and I guarantee I was the first person back on it this year. Oh, what a cool feeling. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. So nice be back out on the water again yeah oh you know what i didn't even think you guys would have any ice out yet i thought you'd still be uh have, have a fair amount of ice up there the uh, the big lakes like lake of the woods and the uh, lake trout lakes they've certainly they've certainly got another week to 10 days to go but yeah. we've been having this incredibly warm weather so uh like i think uh, tomorrow is supposed to be close to 20 again nice. so it, it's going quickly awesome great your, your career is, uh, is really an inspiration to myself and so many. Um, for As far as people who are kind of just starting out and want to try to pursue their passion, maybe to make a living, what would be um, some advice or, or maybe the number one thing that you would offer to, for them to focus on going forward? Um, believe it or not, and this, this will be probably strange, is you can do it. Whatever you want to do. And now and this is what i would say at a graduation i don't care if you want to be a hairdresser uh, a garbage collector and there's nothing wrong with either of those two jobs whatever you want to do whatever your passion is do it, do it. and do it well uh, about three doors down here in kenora uh was a young lad mm -hmm. and he used to come over to the house when he was five six seven years old and we'd go down in the basement and we'd play with tackle and then we'd go out and fish and we started to fish some tournaments or whatever and that is jeff gustafson who's now in the top five on the flw tour in the wow. u.s tearing it up wow. and you can do whatever you want to do just do it well okay i'm going to switch gears a little bit tell me um let's assume you're getting to a new body of water, never fished. All you know is the species that's in there. How are you going to dissect this lake? Where are you going to start? What's your, what's your um, routine kind of like? And, and what, does your routine vary based on the species, uh, like assuming it's, it's brand new water to you? What would your routine be like? Um, it, it, uh, you, always, you always try to play the season. Right. Uh, so, so, you know, if, if I could take one, whether it's walleye or smallmouth, uh, let, let's take smallmouth bass as nothing but an example. Yep. <clears throat> you know, early in the spring, and we're fortunate up here that until July the 1st, uh, we have a catch and release uh, season, even during the spawn. So if I'm fishing smallmouth, uh, the first thing I think about is what time of year is it? What are they likely doing? Is it pre-spawn, post-spawn? Are they in the middle of the spawn? Is it pre-summer? Is it summer? Is it post-summer? Is it early fall? And then when you understand the fish, and you can never understand uh, the fish too well. Right. A real good friend of mine, Al Linder, mm -hmm. uh, Al's a dear, dear friend. Al and Ron put together a formula and the formula is F plus L plus P equals S. And it stands for understand the fish, locate it, and you locate it both seasonally, so spring, summer, fall. Right. Uh, but you would also locate it daily because today it might be windy, tomorrow it might be sunny, might be hot, it might be cold. Mm -hmm. So you understand the fish, that's the F factor. Understand the L, that's location, both seasonally and daily, and then make the right presentation. Right. And the right presentation would be based on the fact that you understand location and you understand the fish. So if it's the middle of summer and it's, say, walleyes, walleyes in the middle of summer are eating three percent of their body weight every day there i start out fishing for walleyes on a new body of water i would start out throwing baits 99.9 percent .9 of folks would never ever throw they wouldn't even throw them on their favorite walleye lakes 
but you know, uh, history has shown me that throwing three quarter to one ounce jigs and six inch swim baits, and you fish those aggressively in eight to 10 feet of water, they rip the rod out of your hand. Wow. But that's understanding the fish are shallow, they're aggressive, they're eating 3% of their body weight. And the only time I slow down and get finesse is if the fish tell me to. Anglers are self-fulfilling prophets. So if you start the day saying, I think it's gonna be a tough bite, and you you put six pound test line on a little tiny hook or a little tiny jig and you get a three inch crappie minnow and you fish it slowly over the side of the boat guess what it's going to be a tough day yeah. you're a selling <laughs> profit we go out uh al lynn or doug stang or myself or bob azumi and bob's a dear dear friend we'll go out and we, i mean we're cocky uh, but we'll always say, yeah, <laughs> we're going to get them today. Yeah. And so we'll go out and fish fast. We'll fish aggressively. We may slow down and fish finesse at the end of the day or be forced to. But we always start off on that absolutely, totally different attitude. We yeah. start out saying we're going to catch them and we're going to catch them working fast and aggressively. So it's understanding the fish putting the location together and then matching your presentation and the S factor is you do those three things, you'll be successful. Successful. Great. Great advice. A friend of mine told me, I've got to ask you this. If you were <laughs> stuck on an Island with only one rod and you could have only one lure, what's your lure of choice? It, it would depend on the species to a large degree. Yeah. Um, but the easy answer always is a jig. Uh, with the jig brand, you can do anything. I can swim a jig. I can vertically present it. Uh, I can cast it. I control it. I can put soft baits on it. I can put live baits on it. Uh, I can fish it top, bottom, in the middle. A jig is the most versatile uh, lure that's probably ever been made. And amazingly, in the Second World War, in the... Uh, pilots when they were uh, especially in the in the Pacific they would have survival kits and a jig was the one lure they were they were they had in their survival kits oh, and it was a good choice yeah for sure you for can sure. do anything with the jig let's talk a little bit about kind of today's youth I I, I have worries about um, today's youth just spending too much time indoors and not enough outdoors you know they're, they're tied up with the devices and and all those types of things and I know personally my childhood was spent almost 100% outdoors from building forts to, you know, jumping in the canoe and fishing and everything else. And I feel like it really uh, built character and it, and it made me the person I am today. You know, it's good for your health. It's good for your mind and body and everything else. So what's your take on that whole thing and, and the trend that's almost happening with, with some youth today, not spending enough time outdoors? It's frightening, Brandon. Right. Truly, truly frightening. Um, and sad in a way as well. Um, because they're missing what you and I know uh, is just the greatest experience ever. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned Jeff Gustafson uh, growing up fishing with Jeffy, and now I've got a, my grandson, Liam. Yeah. He's my best fishing partner. Um, we were out today checking hunting spots. I mean, it's May, 1st of May. Uh, we'll be fishing uh, on the weekend. There has not been a weekend in the past eight to 10 years, not a single weekend, we have not hunted or fished together. Wow. And I still give him heck because he's always texting and he's on his phone. <laughs> um, At least he's out there. <laughs> he's out there. Yeah. But, but, but here's the other thing. Um, I think the problem isn't so much the, uh, isn't so much the kids. It is the parents, right? Um, and we should be talking about how do we get moms and dads out fishing? Because if moms and dads and grandmothers and grandfathers are out, the kids are out fishing with them. Yeah. And my experience has been with Liam. Um, once you get them out, you can't stop them. Yeah, uh, they want to go. They're forever for. He gets off the bus at from school. He gets home at 10 after 4 or 5 after. My phone rings. I guarantee those last two phone calls, I know it was from him because uh, I called another buddy of mine, uh, uh, a bear expert, and uh, over the photos that I got on our trail cams. And I know Liam's calling me right now trying to find out uh, what did Mike tell us about the bear shots that we yeah. got today, the photos. So that's cool. 
we were out last summer and we were musky fishing and here's the two of us a grandfather and his 15 year old grandson <clears throat> and liam said to me turn out of the blue and he said grandpa what do you think would have happened to me if you hadn't have taken me hunting and fishing huh. and wow what a frightening thought yeah and I, I, I honestly, I was, again, one of those, I wasn't sure what to say, but he was obviously thinking, um, God, if somebody hadn't have introduced me to this, what would I have become? Yeah. And that's, uh, that's a frightening thought. Yeah. 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 I, actually, uh, I actually follow Liam on Instagram and see some of those pictures me. of you guys out there. It's unbelievable. He told me you did. Oh, did he mention that? Good. Yeah. yeah I, nice. I told him I was going to do the interview today, and he, he said, oh, Brandon follows me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I love <laughs> it. Cool. <laughs> well, Gord, I don't want to take too much more of your time. Uh, that pretty much wraps it up. I, I have written down here, I wanted to ask you about what you were going to fish for at Ice Out, but you told me earlier you don't have much ice left anyway, so what are you <laughs> fishing for this weekend? The speckled trout fishing, Brandon. Right now, as the ice retreats from shore, we have a little secret, and that is if it gets out 25, 30 feet. And so most of the, the small speckled trout rainbow trout lakes are still frozen. But as they retreat from shore, if you cast out to the retreating edge of the ice and then slowly pull your lure off the edge of the ice and it falls in the water, the speckles will hang under that edge and you just pull it off and they come roaring in and hit your bait. Cool. And again, it's, it's huckleberry fin fishing. I love it. Awesome. That sounds amazing. Well, have a great time doing it. Best of luck to you. And uh, I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to do this. It's really an honor for me and a pleasure to get a chance to speak with you. So thank you so much. And uh, best of luck in 2018. Best of luck to Liam. Tell him I said hello. And I'll, I'll be watching for your guys' photos this year. Thank you ever so much. And listen, uh, you ever want to do this again or, or talk a specific species? Um, maybe help folks uh, catch walleye or pike or bass anytime, Brandon. Great. Truly, truly, the pleasure was mine. Great. Thank you so much, Gord. Have a great night, and then we'll talk to you again. Thank you ever so much. Okay, take care. Well, guys, that wraps it up. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to check that description box below. I'm going to post some links for Gord and his grandson Liam's uh, Instagram pages so you guys can follow along and see the incredible work they're doing out there on the Lake of the Woods. And uh, do me a favor and smash that like button and leave a little comment thanking Gord for doing this interview. We'll see you next time.